Hello and welcome to this week's Bite Size Book Buzz. I am Annie Mazes from Workman Publishing and today I am joined by Lynette Kim from Harlequin, Laura Keefe from Bloomsbury, Chris Vicari from Sterling, and Anthony Parisi from Tor. And they all have wonderful books to share with you. So take it away, Lynette. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Lynette. I'm the library marketer for Harlequin. Today I am very excited to talk to you about Susan Mallory's latest, The Vineyard at Painted Moon. This is a fresh new writing direction from Susan. I loved this book. Loved it so much more than I thought I would. It's what I needed to read right now. I finished it in a day. So Mackenzie is a young, talented winemaker. Uh, she was humbly raised by her now late grandfather. She ends up marrying her college roommate's older brother, Kyle, and their family is essentially wine royalty in Washington state. So fast forward many years, Mackenzie has made for herself this really idyllic life, doing what she loves best, which is working alongside Kyle's family, making wine. So Kyle's entire family, including Mackenzie's old roommate, now her best friend, they all live at the beautiful vineyard estate headed by Kyle's matriarch mother. And when I say idyllic, I mean, picture sort of built a villa built around a courtyard where every couple or family has their own house. And when one of them bakes cookies, they hang up a cookie flag so that the kids know to come running. This is like my dream. Uh, it's details like this that make the book so much fun. Um, but then the unexpected happens. Mackenzie and Kyle's marriage disintegrates. Suddenly she's contemplating not only the future of her career, but the devastation of losing the only family she really has. Um, but as she's facing these decisions, the cracks within her found family start to show, siblings take sides, and Mackenzie gathers the courage to do this really amazing thing, which is to strike out and build her own vineyard as a legacy for her unborn child. So unlike Susan's prior books, it's not a romance. Yes, it has quirky characters and nails those family dynamics that Susan really writes well. Um, it also has heroes you're rooting for, women coming into their own, and proper villains um, that make the fun the book really fun um, in a very old school Disney sort of way. So the book is out February 9th. Please check it out. You'll really love it. And I'm going to pass the mic over to Laura. Thank you, Lynette. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Keefe. I am the marketing director at Bloomsbury Publishing. I am excited to tell you today about Kin, a memoir from a writer called Shauna K. Rodenberg. Um, Kin is coming out in June. It is absolutely incredible. Shauna is uh, a mom of five and a nurse, and she teaches English at her local community college, but she is first and foremost a daughter of Kentucky. Um, Shauna was born, you know, the umpteenth generation, 300 years worth of her family in the hills of eastern Kentucky. Uh, but when she was five years old, her father, who was a Vietnam vet, sort of recently returned from a kind of a disastrous tour, moved his family to Minnesota to live with a religious organization that is now known as The Body uh, in a very austere, strict setting as kind of a way he was seeking healing. Um, it was kind of a cult, <laughs> but Shauna Kay, um, you know, also didn't fit in particularly well there. She was a very boisterous child. She was frequently being disciplined and punished. Um, ultimately, tragically, she ended up being assaulted by uh, an older member of the community. And when her family found out, you know, her dad packed them all up and moved them back to Kentucky, sort of to the embrace of her family. Um, and from there, she just tells a little bit about the rest of her life. You get such an incredible vivid picture of the place where Shauna is from, her, her family, her relationships with all of them. Uh, you know, her community there has been really ravaged by the coal mining industry, but it is rich in family and tradition. Uh, her writing is absolutely beautiful. She's already won a Rona Jaffe Award. I think this is a good comp for Hillbilly Elegy and Educated, um, and it's a great choice for book clubs. So look for Shauna K. Rodenberg and Kin in June 2001. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to try to stop sharing. It's not working. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Laura. Thank you, Annie, for getting us all together. Hello, librarians. My name again is Chris Vicari, Director of Library Marketing at Sterling. My bite-size buzz book today is a favorite of mine. Kevin Zarelli's Windows on the World Complete Wine Course Revised Edition, also its 35th anniversary edition. I talk about this book all the time. Every time we have a new revised edition because it's still one of the best books I've ever been around. Certainly in my mind, it is the best book for wine beginners. 
who simply want to walk around their local wine store and not be intimidated by label or price. And walk around they are as wine sales have only increased in 2020. After reading this book, you'll no longer be intimidated. Kevin is the consummate teacher. His story is unique. He was self-taught and the youngest American sommelier in the United States at 20 years of age. He was the first American sommelier in New York City at 25 years of age in 1976, all of which led him to the Windows on the World restaurant, formerly atop the original World Trade Center in New York City, also his award-winning wine school, which has graduated 20,000 students, and later to him winning a James Beard Lifetime Achievement Award, all of which adds to why the new chapter included in this edition called Windows on the Wine and Food Revolution 1970 to 2020 is a thoughtful and personal reflection on his 50 years in restaurants and what has changed in wine and food culture during his career. I hope you'll be able to take a look at your collections and add this new edition, which also includes sections on Prosecco and Rosé. Now over to you, Anthony. Thanks, Chris. And hi, everyone. I'm Anthony Parisi from Tour. I'm just getting ready to share my screen. There we go. Um, to show you the gorgeous cover of The Echo Wife. So The Echo Wife is a page turning near future domestic suspense novel from bestselling author Sarah Gailey, author of Magic for Liars and Upright Women Wanted. This is a chilling read combining the eerie family drama of Shirley Jackson with the dramatic pacing of Ruth Ware. In the novel, readers follow protagonist Evelyn Caldwell. Right away, you find out that Evelyn's husband, Nathan, has been having an affair. And the twist is he's having an affair with Evelyn Caldwell, or to be exact, with a genetically cloned replica of Evelyn. Martine is a clone made from Evelyn's um, award-winning research. Martine's patient and gentle and obedient. She's everything Evelyn swore she'd never be. And she's having an affair with Evelyn's husband. But after a morning that begins with a confrontation and ends with Nathan's body bleeding out on the kitchen floor, the two Caldwell wives will have to think fast before sharing everything, including a jail cell. So The Echo Wife is a nonstop thrill ride of lies, betrayal, and identity. This book is perfect for readers of both science fiction and thrillers, as well as fans of Big Little Lies and Killing Eve. We've seen tremendous pre-pub praise already for The Echo Wife, including a book list start review, saying that readers will be thinking about this long after the final page. And Entertainment Weekly urges new readers of Sarah Gailey to get ready for fun surprises. So we're very excited to be publishing Sarah Gailey's next work and extending their audience into new genres. I hope you get a chance to read and review The Echo Wife prior to its on sale on February 6th, 16th, 2021. And e-galleys are available on NetGalley. So please go ahead and request to read and we hope you'll consider it for Library Reads. Thanks so much. I told you that was a pretty powerhouse bite-sized book buzz. Thank you for joining us this week. We will be back next week with yet more wonderful titles to add to those TBR piles. Thank you and take care.